papaya. I'm going to peel it like so. Give it a peel. And then I'm going to put some lemon juice on it for the alkaline. Now what alkaline does is it's a healer to bring our DNA back to its rightful order. It helps for the things that they have put in our food. But when you're messing with alkaline, you cannot um, continue to eat processed foods. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to leave certain things alone. You have to leave processed foods alone when you decide to do an alkaline diet or you mess your body up. So I like papaya with cantaloupe. And I'm going to try some honeydew melon this time. I'm going to cut a melon up and put in here with some lemon. Because like I said, the lemon the lemon helps flush your body of bacteria as well as while you drink lemon mm -hmm. water. Um, it's not only for the alkaline, but it helps flush things in your body just as well. So the lemon is a good... Uh, you can season food with lemon to get the flavor instead of using uh, salt. Because lemon acts as also as a salt on your food. You know, and it brings the flavor up and out of your food as well. And, um, you know, it's all about getting away from this processed stuff that man has brought us to, to eat and to uh, rely on. You know, because they preserve most of our food with salt anyway. People want to know why I'm blowing up and why my pressure so high. Because all the food that they give us, you know, it has salt already on it when it gets to us. Because it's a preservative. And with it being a preservative, we don't think, and a lot of us don't even know, to uh, rinse our food. Mm -hmm. You know, from the salt mm -hmm. that's on these foods for process. Mm -hmm. You know, salt water, you know, in your lunch meats. You want to know why you got this water in your lunch meat? Because it's a salt water to preserve the meat, and it flows through the meat and gives the meat that flavor. But if we don't rinse it, even the canned goods, when we used to eat the canned goods, you know, they process the food that goes into the can just as well uh, with different things. You have to rinse that stuff. Mm -hmm. Before I stopped eating canned goods, my daddy had taught me, you rinse that stuff off at least six times. And if need be, you take it out the can, put it in another bowl, and you wash that stuff off of that food because you don't know what they're putting on this stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, and now today, where we are in doing our research, he has proven right that we don't know what they're feeding us. You know, he used to tell me a long time ago, here they go. they go going to kill us. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's just what they're trying to do today. You know, they're trying to kill us through everything. And the only thing that I have truly found that we're really safe with, and we really may not even be safe with that, mm -hmm. the beans, the vegetables, and the fruits. All this other stuff, they didn't put too much stuff in it. Entirely too much stuff. Mm -hmm. And we were suffering in our bodies because of it, you know. And then people are watching people, you know, they're, uh, they have... Uh, you wash your foods off too. You wash your fruits and your vegetables really good. I'm washing this honeydew melon with, with some dishwasher liquid. It's got some Dawn dishwasher liquid, my favorite soap. Because it cuts everything. But when I'm soaking my apples and different things like that, I soak them. Even bananas if I buy my plantains before I use them. I wash my stuff off because we don't know where it then went through, what it then went through, and where it come from. And I wash my stuff off so that when I cut this knife through it, what's on the outside of this knife, when I went through it, it would go inside my food, which would contaminate my food. So mm -hmm. when I wash the vegetable or the fruit off and I put the knife through it, it's clean. Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't have to worry about did I get sick from something that I fixed mm -hmm. because it can't happen. So it's about, you know... Y'all is clean. And with y'all being clean, we have to learn to be clean. We weren't taught a lot of things. You know, we were taught, we were going to cut that milling up. You ain't wash the milling. You just cut it. You know, and you putting a germ 
from the outside on the inside of your food. And you want to know why you're sick. We're doing so many things that we're not thinking. We're comprehensible thinking. we just doing stuff. So, and this is for the young people, you know, that they need to stop doing the things that they're doing and think that they know everything. Because really you don't. You know, I may be 50-something years old. How old am I? What year is this? I'm 56. <laughs> um... I'm 56 years old, and being at this age, and gone through a lot of things that I've gone through, and wishing that I had a known or somebody to have taught me some of the things that I know now, before now, you know, I've been a better woman. But I'm grateful for the woman that I have turned out to be, don't get me wrong, I still got a long ways to go to be where y'all would have me to be. I'm not perfect, but I don't mind helping anybody be where they need to be or where they're trying to get to either. So yeah, I'm cutting all this honeydew out this milling, just like this. Sometimes the knife don't want to go all the way down the way you want it to go. And you get all that honeydew out of there. You know, I didn't even taste this. My daughter picked it for me. I always let her pick my fruit. That's good, bro. She picked a good sweet one. <laughs> Clean the seeds out. Now I have a jar. I have a few seeds left too. I have a jar. I'm going to put these in. These seeds in for the wilderness. Cause somebody going to need them. Mm -hmm. Somebody going to need them. But um, because we're going to have to start all over again somehow, some way. I don't know how y'all going to do it. I ain't portraying how he going to do it. I'm just preparing myself the best way I know how to help along the way. Because, you know, we're going to run into people that don't want to keep moving. They're going to want to sit where they're at. And, you know, with them sitting where they're at, we don't know how long they're going to have to sit there. We know a thousand years, one day is a thousand years with y'all. Man, we in the seventh year already? Mm -hmm. How many centuries did we go through in the natural to get to the seventh year? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So we don't know what y'all gonna do. You know, and we really need to stop trying to figure it out. Because he said no man will know the time, the day, or the hour. Mm -hmm. No man. We can predict all we want. But all we're doing is setting ourselves up for a big mm -hmm. fall. Mm -hmm. For real, for real. Because he said, you know, the law itself, you know, and doing that law, come to think about it, that law has helped me a lot. We're looking at things differently mm -hmm. and seeing things in a different light when you're working with that law. It has allowed me to be able to check myself, so to say. I was talking to my sister here today. This is, now I'm going to work on something else. It's time for me to work on something else. Yeah, we're going to have a nice little bunch of fruit here. <laughs> Because I don't like to eat all the time, and I get in a place where I don't want heavy food, or I just don't want to cook. And um, I prefer my fruit, but I prefer what I prefer mixed the way I want it mixed. Mm -hmm. You know, because I can sit and eat a bowl of fruit, and I'm good for the whole day, maybe mm -hmm. even for the night. I, I'll eat one meal a day. And, you know, because of where we're headed and where we're going, our spirits really need to become light. Because there's going to be a time where we ain't going to be able to eat. Because we're too busy running. And we're not going to be able to find food because we're too busy running. Because they're coming after us. We just don't know how y'all going to protect us. This is why we also must be in spirit. Uh, with my head wrapped. Over there. You get Okay. Ah. Yeah, we're going 
go. This is why we must have spirit. We can't hear y'all without spirit. Mm -hmm. We can't understand what he was asking of us. He said in his word that we're supposed to come to him in spirit and in truth. So therefore, that tells you right there that we can't come to him any kind of way. Mm -hmm. You know, he has an order to things. And when we come to him in spirit and in truth, then and only then will he give you what you see. Because now, mm -hmm. you know, I used to tell people that when you, how can you expect Yah to trust you and believe you if you're not being honest with yourself? Mm -hmm. It started with you. It don't start with it. nobody else. You the vessel, you the temple he's seeking. You seeking him, he looking at your heart. What's in your heart? Mm -hmm. Is there truth in your heart? Is there love in your heart? What's in your heart? You know? And how you do a heart check? Galatians 5, the fruits of the Spirit. How you do that? You break down the fruits in Hebrew. You look at yourself, you pray, you fast. See, he said, these things come by fasting and prayer. See, people want to believe that it's just fighting demons and receiving gifts and all these other things that come by fasting and prayer. No. Fasting and prayer has a lot, <coughs> excuse me, a lot that it offers. But you have to be in the place to want it. You have to actually truly be seeking the Spirit and truly fearing Yah in order for Him to give you what you seek. You're not going to always receive just what you want to receive if you're not in the right place because you're not going to understand it. If you don't study and seek, and this is how you get it, you have to study the Word. He says, seek me for the deeper things. Well, you're not going to find them just reading. He says, study to show yourself approved. That's how you find it. You study. You get quiet, you pray before you read, and you get in that word. That's so that's your matter. That's your food. That's your spiritual food. That's how your spirit man eat. That's how your spirit man come alive. Because you're killing the flesh. How you killing the flesh? By fasting and read and study. That's how you killing the flesh. And then days that you don't have, days that you can't, days that you cannot. Uh, read or study. You can still fast, but you have to learn to be in the spirit when you fasted. Because the flesh will try to consume that and take that out. You wasted your, your energy and your time. So, this is how you do it. You know, People want to know, how do I get there? How do I this? How do I that? And the only reason I'm doing this, I was going to do this video for something else. But y'all chose he wanted to do it this way. So I'm doing what y'all was having to do at this moment. And I'm speaking on these things. I was in the church. A lot of us have come out the church. And y'all brought me to the truth in a very strange way. I had a 2005 Dodge Caravan. Doors opened on both sides, mm -hmm. white. Yah, actually I had asked my spiritual son if he could, you know, change my transmission oil. Well, mm -hmm. he got it open, he drained the oil, but he couldn't put the pan back on. And I got stuck at home for two months. You know, the church say seek the elders or call the elders, right? And you need help. Well, they knew I was missing. They knew I wasn't there. Did you think anybody called to see about me or check on me? No. Before that, y'all was teaching me in the church, in the back of the church on Bible study Wednesday night. Y'all was teaching me. The pastor was preaching, but I was getting my lesson from the most high in the back of the church. Anyway, when those things occurred, the church didn't call. They didn't come see about me or nothing. Car broke down. All right, I end up on the bus. This particular day, I'm walking down the street. And I'm always loving on the Most High. So I was praising and worshiping by myself, praising and worshiping. And in that praise and worship, he dropped his true name in my mouth. And 
and that's why I don't let nobody move me today. Then I ended up in the Messianic temple with the Messianic faith. Then I got up in there and I saw church on nail and a few other things. And I stayed for a little while. I stayed until y'all moved me. Till the word told me what I needed to do. See, people were to walk around and talk about, I ain't doing this until y'all tell me. Well, you read the word, right? You're studying the word, right? Do you not know that as you read that word on a daily basis that he's talking to you? And he's telling you what to do through that word on a daily basis? The word literally tells you what to do, where to do it, and how to do it. I asked him, I said, Father, if your word is real, give me a sign. I was going to take my son out to Children's Hospital because he's blind for a doctor's appointment this particular morning. And we, I didn't want to leave too soon. So I laid on my bed. We got dressed. We was ready to go early. So I laid on my bed and I began to read the word. As I was reading the word, do y'all not believe me? Please believe me when I tell you. The letters stood up. They looked like little buildings. I said, oh my, this word is alive and it's real. So those of you who don't believe me, don't think that that word is true and it's real, seek y'all. He going to show it to you. Seek him on a real basis in spirit and in truth. But you got to be real with yourself. You can't be real with yourself. You can't be, y'all ain't going to be real with you. He going to call you a liar. This is why we go through the trials and the tests and the journeys that we go through. Because mm -hmm. we're being tested every day in something. But the test is for you to look at yourself. Not to point the finger at nobody else. Not to look at nobody. Look at yourself. This is how we do the self-examination. This is where the self-examination comes from. Because what? The spirit man is on the inside. The flesh is on the outside. The flesh is covering the spirit. The spirit got to come forth. How the spirit going to come forth if you let the flesh control? You got to bring the flesh up under the submission of the word of the most high. It ain't going to happen no other way. This is where your fasting come in at. This is where other things come in at. Y'all do so much when you fast. But you got to give him the time. You got to give him your time. You got to turn the TV off. You got to turn the music off sometime. And give y'all your time. You don't give y'all no time. You ain't got nothing coming. That's real. You got to give y'all something. He died for you. He gave his life for you. He gave you that book. In that book he told you what to do. He told you how to do it. And the most important thing that he told us to do was love. Without love, your gifts and your powers are not going to come forth. Each and every one of you have a gift. Each and every one of you have a power. But you have to understand that it's not yours. It's on loan. As long as you are obedient. This is where the Christ-like, the Mashiach-like mind come in at. And having the Mashiach-like mind. And the Mashiach-like mind being in you. And your, your mind being in the Mashiach. All on one accord with him. You can't do nothing without him. You can't do this with, within yourself. What's getting ready to come? Your gifts and your powers have to come forth. And you got to fast and pray in order to get them. You got to seek him in order to receive them. You got to obey these commandments and line up to this word in order to be powerful. Are you going to be stuck just like the next person? Not knowing where to go, what to do, relying on man again. And he lead you wrong because why? He in his own stuff. And you can't even see that he in his own stuff because you ain't trusting y'all. We got to trust the most high. We can't see him. He said, how can you love your brother that you can't see? So how can you love y'all if you can't even love your brother that you can't see? How? We got to come out of this wicked stuff. We have got to undress out of this wickedness that these people have put on us and redress ourselves spiritually. This is a spiritual journey, people. It is no longer physical. No longer. Time is short and time is not. The door is about to close. 
Don't be left on the other side. Be left on the inside, not on the outside. It's time now. And may the Most High bless y'all and may this message, trust me, Father, I thank you that you will allow this word to be a blessing to the hearer and let the hearer hear what it is that you have for him to hear or her to hear. Bless them, Father, in the mighty name of your son, Yeshua, to open up to receive what has been spoken, that it was not of me, but it was of you. I give you all the praise, the honor, and esteem for allowing me to be able to do this. Now let your will be done in their lives, in their minds, circumcise their hearts, Father, that they receive what has been spoken and given unto them. In the name of Yahshua, Hamashiach, so be it. We cut it off.